what are the requisites for a female to uh, gain a natural pregnancy the vagina should be capable of receiving sperm so what does this mean there should not uh, you know there should not be any mullerian anomalies or absent vagina or septate vagina in uh, such cases normal cervical mucus to allow sperm uh, passage now cervical mucus we know during every phase of menstruation the cervical mucus keeps on changing so during the estrogen phase that is during the follicular phase and the mucus is dry and it's it's not sticky at all during when once you're ovulating it becomes clear and it's uh, you know it's thin and in the luteal phase it again becomes you know uh, a little bit sticky so yes in the norm, normal cervical mucus sh should be present it should not be more thick or it should not be acidic so that it entraps the sperms ovulatory cycles a female has to have regular menstruation uh, menstrual cycles with the evidence of ovulation patent fallopian tubes patent fallopian tubes yani don both the uh, fallopian tubes should be open you can test it via medium of hsg that is hysterosalpingography uh, or uh, sis that is uh, saline infusion sonosalpingography the uterus should be developing and should be capable of sustaining a pregnancy now this should you should exclude cases of you know uh, unicornate uterus septate uterus or uh, uh, septate uterus complete sep uh, complete or partial septum so you, you need to evaluate at every point and time that what uh, what could be the cause of female infertility it can be either at the uterine level at the tubal le level at the ovarian level or at the cervical level so you can you know differentiate you know you can categorize and evaluate each parameter differently for uterus to uh, to see whether the uterus is healthy and there is no septum in it you can do a 3d scan of that patient in the secretory phase again it should be devoid of any fibroids fibroids again if the fibroids are huge and they are at the level of endometrium where they are you know indenting or pressurizing the endometrium again this patient uh, will not have a healthy pregnancy she might land into miscarriage or implantation cannot occur in this patient if she has endometriosis or adenomyosis or a polyp present at the fundal level where the implantation occurs so these things you have to evaluate at different stages when you are evaluating a couple with a female factor infertility uh, adequate hormonal status to maintain pregnancy this simply means an intact hpo access where she's getting regular menstrual uh, menstrual cycles uh, again she is ovulating her thyroid functions are normal her prolactin levels are normal and um, you know she is not or does not fall in any category of endocrinological disorders like pcos or hyper or hypothyroidism frequency of the intercourse has to be 2 to 3 times per week normal immunological response Responses to accommodate sperm and conceptus. Now, this I will be discussing later, so you'll understand this better. Adequate health and nutritional status to maintain the nutrition and oxygenation of placenta and fetus. Like I said, the a female partner should not be underweight, malnourished, or overweight again, because anything beyond normal is going to cause complications in her pregnancy period. so what are the general factors affecting fertility smoking if the mother is more if uh, the female who's trying to conceive or in the preconceptional uh, period if she's smoking or having in uh, uh, or in uh, has a high alcohol intake or recurrent alcohol intake poor sleeping habits increased caffeine intake uh, a caffeine intake of 250 mg is recommended if you're trying to conceive or planning for a pregnancy occupational hazards if she's working as a lab uh, you know lab technician in a radiological lab or exposure uh, in uh, or in an occupation like mining or any other occupation which where there is high uh, risk of exposure to plastics phthalates leads and pesticides which can again have a, a you know disastrous effect on her ovarian reserve now what are the causes of infertility like i said female factor causes contribute to 30% per uh, 30% cases of infertility male factor contribute to about 30% unexplained where there is no reason for infertility they are they constitute to about 10% and combined that is male plus female yani uh, means um, the male has some problem the female has uh, some problem and both uh, and both are presenting as an infertile couple so such combined causes are 30% of the cases so in female factor we are going to focus on female factor today so the female factor like i said you can categorize it as the at the le level of the ovaries now what at the level of the ovaries ovulatory dysfunction as in whether 
she is an ovarian failure premature ovarian failure or uh, she has pcos where uh, you know the ovulation where she is having an ovulatory cycle as in the ovulation is not occurring or she has endometriosis where the uh, quality of the oocyte gets uh, de uh, you know uh, decreases the quality of the oocyte gets affected immunological factors uh, where uh, you know the there are ovarian antibodies against the ovary itself autoimmune factors where the patient is have is suffering from autoimmune uh, disease is and she has to uh, you know uh, be put on chemotherapeutic agents or immunosuppressive agents due to which which is going to have a deleterious effect on her ovaries again the uterine and cervical factor that is a uh, presence of any uh, obstructive lesions like uh, fibroids or polyps or uh, adenomyotic uterus or uh, and cervical same factors so what is the basic workup for infertility you have to evaluate both partners see in gynecology when a female comes to you you take female partner's history you are not bothered about the male partner but when it comes to infertility you have to uh, conduct a history taking session with both the male partner and the female partner so you you have to consult both the uh, both the partners while taking the history it has to be a detailed history physical examination of the both of both the partners is important now female partners of physical examination why it's important to check the cervix to check the vagina whether there is any local causes or local uh, you know whether there is cervical er erosion or sept septum in the vagina again or any other sources of infection again in male partners you have to evaluate the size of the testes whether there is uh, you know vast differences present or not whether there is uh, any infections epididymitis or hydrocele is present hernia is present so these things can be evaluated by physical examination of both the partners semen analysis semen analysis 90% of diagnosis of the uh, male fertility parameters can be uh, done after uh, conducting a simple semen analysis so as per who a normal semen analysis will be a normal volume of minimum 1.5 ml, uh, ml a normal count of uh, 16 million per ml a normal progressive motility of uh, more than 32% and a normal morphology of more than 4% so this is the basic criteria which is determined by who in 2021 uh, the eval evaluation of ovulation. Now, how will you evaluate whether the female is ovulating or not? You can ask her to check her basal body temperature or you can do, uh, you can ask her to, you know, use LH, kit, uh, LH kits or own also known as ovulation kits or the calendar method where she takes an average of the last six menstrual cycles and then the last 14 days are constant. So if it's a, the average of the cycle is 28 days, then she's ovulating somewhere around the 14th day. So then you can advise that uh, patient, uh, uh, the, that patient to have intercourse after 10th day of her uh, p of her periods from 10th day of her periods till 18th day of her periods on alternate days th this way you can time her intercourse uh, again evaluation of ovulation uh, you can also do a follicular study for this patient where you can track her ovulation or document her ovulation evidence of fallopian tube patency like i said you can assess this by hysterosalpingography saline infusion uh, sonography or uh, another method is laprohistoscopy in which you do tubal testing the, that is recommended only for patients who have more than two years of infertility Postcoital test, which is not actually routinely performed now by any of the clinician, it was very initially performed, but uh, it has no valid. Uh, uh, the most of the studies have found it invalid. So postcoital test is basically to check the cervical mucus hostility, whether the cervical mucus is you know entraps the sperm. So what you do in this is you ask the patient to have intercourse and to uh, after having intercourse to report to your uh, you know. Uh, to re report to your fertility center within 30 minutes of having intercourse, you take a swab from the cervical uh, uh, level, that is the cervical mucus swab, and you see it under the microscope whether there is entrapment of sperms or not. So this is known as postcoital test. A uh, couple should be counseled about the probable causes of infertility after a detailed history. The tests and procedures to make a confirmatory diagnosis on the basis of the history you have taken should be advised. And on basis of your diagnosis, you have to plan a treatment, individualized treatment has to be offered to that couple. Also, the couple's interview has to be conducted together as well as separately to obtain some confidential information. So what does this mean? What does this mean? 
Sometimes a female partner is, feels awkward to talk about her sexual experiences in front of her uh, husband. So at this point of time, you can ask the male partner to sit outside and ask her what are the uh, you know problems she's facing during her you know uh, during intercourse and same same goes for the male partner if there is any significant cause or significant history of sexual dysfunction uh, what are the common causes of female infertility pelvic causes like endometriosis or adhesions now endometriosis is we all know it is the uterine lining implants itself to the you know to the other pelvic organs like it can be present on the bladder in the ovaries on the tubes or any other pelvic uh, or the bladder so this is known as endometriosis adhesions if she has undergone any pelvic surgery in the past or she had a pid like pelvic inflammatory diseases which we you know uh, discussed earlier due to st the due to sexually transmitted organisms so there can be uh, you know pelvic adhesions present now how will these uh, pelvic th these pelvic causes cause infertility because they will hinder the tubal motility now why is the tube important like i told you the four steps of ovulation ejaculation fertilization and implantation the fertilization occurs in the tubes that is at the ampullary level. So if the tubes are immotile or the tubes are not healthy, then the uh, the transfer or the tubes are blocked, then the transfer of the ovum to the, uh, you know, uh, to the ampullary part and the sperm into the tube will not occur and hence uh, tubal factor infertility. The uterine factors like uh, unfavorable endometrium for needation. What does this mean? The, you know, the ovulation has occurred, the fertilization has occurred, but the endometrium is not healthy for the uh, embryo to adhere itself to the uterus then there will be no chances of implantation or needation in such patients so you need to assess the endometrium uh, in which phase it is by you can do this by a opd procedure known as endometrial biopsy and send it for hpr to see the phase of the endometrium or you can again we as fertility specialists like we evaluate everything sonographically uh, so sonographically so that can be done Chronic endometritis. Again, this can be due to tuberculosis or other pelvic infections due to, uh, you know, gonorrhea, chlamydia. So this can also lead to chronic endometritis, which is inflammation of the uterine lining, hence rendering it unfavorable for implantation. Fibroid. So if there is a fibroid which is present at the level of the fundus, or if there's a fibroid which is a, which is a submucosal fibroid, uh, or uh, there's a fibroid which is a coronal fibroid. So again, the coronal fibroid it is again going to block the tubes because it is at the level of the uh, cornua or the ostia and hence uh, you know, uterine plus tubal factor infertility in such case. Sinicae, that is intrauterine adhesion. These are mostly in also known as Asherman syndrome, if you've read about it. So multiple uh, uh, losses, pregnancy losses, again and again, she's undergone DNC and has formed intrauterine adhesions. So this can be another factor which can lead to infert, uh, uterine factor infertility and congenital malformations, like if there is a unicornate uterus, sept complete or partial septate uterus or bicornate uterus. So this can, uh, then there are chances of infertility in such patients. Cervical factor, like I said, cervical mucus hostility where the sperm penetration does not uh, uh, occur very effectively. So in such cases, uh, you can uh, term them as uh, cervical factor infertility, tubal pathology, mostly tubal infections, tuberculosis or PIDs, which can render the tubes blocked or unhealthy and, or, you know, disturb the pathology of the or the health of the tube. Uh, ovarian causes like PCOS, where the ovulation process does not occur on time or or the ovarian reserve has dropped down drastically and that patient is into premature ovarian insufficiency or premature menopause then yes such cases can or uh, such cases can be termed as ovarian factor infertility 